This channel is not about politics, but for a minute let's just rewind back to the election cycle last year, when there was so much debate around student loan debt forgiveness and student loans in general. And now that we're well into the first year of the Biden presidency, this debate continues. A couple of weeks ago, the government extended the pause on student loan and repayments until January 2022. So this video in particular is for all of you millennials with student loans and for some of the Gen Z guys that are still studying and have student loans. And so to eliminate some of the confusion that's kind of circulating around what is happening now and what you can expect around this whole forgiveness debate, potentially in 2022, Let's run a quick Q&A session on some of the most important points. But most importantly, remember, don't make expensive mistakes when it comes to your student loans. If you have student loans or if you're about to take student loans, it's pretty likely that you've been following this whole debate around forgiving student debt pretty closely. And it's certainly a theme that's been gaining a lot of traction ever since the election cycle in 2020 through 2021, uh, both in the media and in Washington, where a lot of senators, a lot of powerful politicians are pushing for canceling some of the student loans uh, because the system clearly is broken. And you may have also seen that um, over the last few months, uh, over 20 or so uh, historically black colleges and universities have also canceled already a lot of the student loans. So this is certainly a theme that's probably going to result in some form of cancellation. So we'll talk about the expectations for the next few months, for the next year, in terms of what you can actually expect and if some of your loans might be actually cancelled. Uh, but let's first spend uh, a few minutes on a, a quick Q&A session on this whole uh, pause that's just been extended, the pause on the repayment uh, of uh, the student loans that's been in effect since March 2020 and that's just been extended into January 2022. Question number one, what is this extension? Well, this extension relates to the measure that was put in place uh, by Congress in March 2020 to help people that had student loans and uh, basically give them a break, give them a pause on uh, repayments and accumulation of interest. Uh, it was initially extended by President Trump until the end of 2020 and then it was extended again by President Biden until September 2021. When will the pause end? Well, this latest extension pushes it from the end of September 2021 until January, the end of January 2022. So it's pushing it by four more months and this would be the last extension. So you will have effectively almost two years of pause on student loan repayments and accumulation of interest. What loans are eligible? Only federal student loans are eligible, so all the loans that are held by the US Department of Education are eligible. Does my loan qualify? Alright, you can check if your loan qualifies on studentaid.gov and effectively this program is automatic. So if you have a loan by the US Department of Education, uh, you should have had this pause applied to your program automatically. Can I also suspend private loans? So the answer here is no, this only applies to the federal student program. But if you have a loan from a private provider, you can typically get a 90-day forbearance upon request. I am in a loan forgiveness program. Does the extension apply to me? So here, this is one of the biggest benefits of this pause. Because if you enrolled in a public service forgiveness program, so remember, you make 120 payments, uh, you work in a public service job. Uh, after 10 years, whatever balance is outstanding on your student loan, that's forgiven. So this is one of the biggest benefits because this whole pause that's been in effect since March 2020, uh, effectively counts towards these payments. So from March 2020 until the end of January 2022, so that's 22 or 23 payments, that's almost two years of payments that you all really don't have to make, are counting towards those 120 payments that you are required to make, aside from working in public service for 10 years, and then the rest of your loans uh, are forgiven. So this is a really uh, a big beneficiary for people that are uh, part of this forgiveness program, because they will really benefit of two years of effectively saving money uh, for two years on their student loan repayments. What about if I'm in an income-driven repayment plan? So this is kind of the same thing here. So um, the income-driven repayment plan is slightly different in a, in a way where your, uh, the amount that you're repaying on your student loans is determined as a percentage of your income. And uh, after you pay uh, your student loans for 20 years, whatever balance is remaining is also forgiven. And so here again on this pause, those almost two years of the pause that's in effect until uh, January 2022, they also count towards these payments. So you really don't effectively spend two years of not repaying your student loans, but they are counting uh, towards those 20 years of payments that you, you're making based on your income. And again, uh, the rest will be forgiven after 20 years. Any chance my loans will be forgiven? Well. This is finally the core of the discussion here, because 
really this pause over the last almost two years from March 2020 until January 2022 that almost can be seen like the first chapter of some kind of a forgiveness program. And we talked about the historically black colleges and universities that have already done this uh, with federal money, really. Uh, and there's uh, a growing traction, a growing debate. This whole theme is growing a lot of uh, momentum. And so uh, let's kind of uh, introduce the actors here who's arguing for what, right? You remember uh, uh, President Biden, before he became president in the election cycle, he was arguing for $10,000 in terms of uh, student loan forgiveness. On the other side, you have uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren and Chuck Schumer, uh, so uh, both uh, Democrats uh, very much on the left side, that are both arguing for $50,000 in terms of student loan forgiveness. Uh, and then you have the whole debate of who can do what, right? You have President Biden that's kind of saying, well, I can do this for myself as an executive order. Congress needs to act, uh, which is what Nancy Pelosi, uh, the House leader, is also uh, arguing for. It has to be done by Congress. Uh, and then uh, on, the, on the other hand, you have uh, uh, Warren and Schumer that are basically telling Biden, no, you can do this on your own. You can do this as an executive action. So, um, you know, suffice to say that we have this pause until January 2022. Uh, it's likely that something is going to have to be done either before the midterm elections in 2022, because Democrats will be um, afraid that they might be losing some seats in the House. And then all of this is going to be gone, right, if they don't have any majority anymore. Or if they do gain more traction in the elections and they'll have more seats and more power, uh, um, a bigger majority, they will certainly try to do something after the elections of 2022. The outcome of this uncertainty for you is, uh, or the takeaway for you uh, should be that you don't want to do something that might endanger you being able to be part of this program, right? Like, for example, refinancing your loan from a federal loan um, into a private loan, because if some kind of a forgiveness program is being is, is going to be put in place. It's going to be uh, voted on by the government or eventually uh, done uh, by Biden uh, single-handedly. Uh, it's likely going to only affect uh, federal loans. So if you refinance in the meantime into uh, with a private lender, uh, you will likely not qualify for that. So you don't want to do something that might endanger your status and your eligibility for any forgiveness that might be coming up in 2022. And finally, what should I do from now until January? Well. You should really start preparing to start repaying uh, these loans again, because you really can't count on any forgiveness being approved or voted on or uh, put in place. So that should not be part of your plan. Uh, hopefully this happens for some of you. Uh, I really cross my fingers for uh, uh, this program to be put in place for especially for those that really can't afford uh, uh, repaying uh, some of the student loans. But there's a few steps that you should be doing to prepare. Number one, it should become part of your budget. You should already start budgeting for these repayments now and start putting money on the side so that it's not a complete surprise come February 2022 when these repayments uh, restart again. Number two, if you moved, uh, you should really notify your lender, uh, your service provider, because you don't want to be missing any notifications uh, and risk missing any of these payments. Number three, you should start uh, thinking about lowering the repayment amount, if possible. Uh, almost half of uh, uh, borrowers over the last uh, couple of years managed to lower the repayment simply by recertifying their income or enrolling in an income-driven uh, repayment plan. So this is certainly out there and you should explore all the options to try to lower your payment. And then uh, the last point I want to make on this is um, there's actually a silver lining of um, President Biden being in office and making some changes here. So if you are part of one of the forgiveness programs, like the public service uh, forgiveness program, and you're close to being to having a student loan debt uh, discharged uh, as part of this program, this is no longer considered as income by the IRS. So previously, whatever loans uh, were forgiven, that was really considered as income and you had to pay penalties and effectively pay taxes on loans that were forgiven to you. Uh, President Biden changed this and until uh, the end of 2025 now, um, none of these will apply. So whatever uh, loans will be forgiven as a part of any forgiveness program to you, do not count as income for you. So you will not have to pay any taxes or any penalties on those. The real question is what to make of all of this debate around forgiving student loans. Is it fair? Is it not fair? How is it fair to the people that just finished paying their student loans versus those that will have their student loans forgiven? How is it fair to the people that were driven to bankruptcy because they had student loans uh, so big they were never able to repay them uh, regardless of the job they would get? You know, I know that the um, college system, the education, the higher education system in the United States is amazing, but somewhat broken uh, because of how expensive it has become. And uh, my personal take on it is, if you can repay your student loans, you should repay your student loan. So the real question is what to do with this. I think 
when you look at the college system uh, and you know how important is it to really have a college degree these days uh, given the value that you're getting and how expensive it is i think it's less valuable than it was 25 30 years ago because so many successful careers and so many successful people out there really didn't have a college degree. You had Elon Musk recently talk against uh, the MBAs and how the value has eroded and how expensive the system is. So I'd love to know how you think about this. You know, I'd love to know how you're dealing with uh, student loans. Uh, are you repaying student loans? Is it a real burden to you? Uh, or do you view it simply as a, uh, as a great system that allowed you to obtain a degree and a great job and you are grateful to whoever lends you the money and you are repaying them and are happy finally when you finish repaying the student loans. I know that for me that was a milestone and I certainly never saw it as a huge burden simply because I knew how much value it's really given me. Anyway, that's just my little rant on student loans and what is really fair, what isn't fair. Uh, this is a very complex subject. Um, so certainly I believe that people that um, are being driven to bankruptcy deserve to get some help. And this is really not fair. But at the same time, people that are in a position to repay their student loans should not be taking advantage of the government for giving them whatever they can forgive them. Or, or somehow they should just pay it forward, uh, give money to the college or to the next students, uh, but somehow pay it forward. Anyway. Thanks for hanging out today. I uh, really appreciate um, this discussion here. I'm really curious what you're thinking and how you're thinking about this. Make sure you give a like to the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next video.